Bam, we're here with Seth McClung, former major league pitcher. Of course, everybody around here, uh, Seth, probably still remembers you as a Greenbrier East player. Um, tonight, you'll be over here at Lindy K. Upton Stadium talking to fans and, and kids, I guess, that wanted to talk to you about your career, sure. how maybe they can do it. I know you're here with your travel teams, and we can see them out here taking batting practice. What uh, What's the situation here? I know you come uh, back yeah. nearly every year. So this is this is year seven uh, coming to to West Virginia, bringing these boys up here. And uh, what we do is is these kids get some exposure to to these Mountain East Conference schools and some other schools that are local. And uh, we're really blessed to have sent a lot of kids to these these uh, schools up here in West Virginia. Um, honestly, for me, it's an excuse to come home, which is great. <laughs> so I really enjoy that. But. Uh, you know, it's I, before I even go, I have to say thank you so much to the Athlon family for letting us come out here. And, and everybody's just so wonderful and helping us uh, find a place to do the things that we do. We couldn't do it without the generosity of everybody here. I would imagine a lot of the kids can look at you and like a role model, a guy that made it from West Virginia, Lewisburg, in, in uh, your instance. But uh, when you uh, and you talk to kids, I'm sure, running a youth organization, um, what do you do? You still have memories you take from high school I mean, and try to impart that on kids and what they can do. It doesn't really matter where you're from. You can do this if you put the work in. No, definitely. So uh, the message for the Florida kids is a little different than the message for the West Virginia kids. I mean, uh, every single time I come home, I, I, I love talking to people and I just want to encourage the, the kids here that, that you can do whatever you want as long as you're good enough. It doesn't matter where you come from. And, and a lot of that is, is the hard work that goes into it. And uh, in today's day and age where the internet's everything, you, you can get exposure now. I mean, just uh, here we are, you and I, 20 years ago, you had a, a tape recorder and there was no video. I mean, li life has changed. So the kids today ha can have a lot, a lot more access to exposure if you put the hard work in. And, and I often tell people like, look, I'm just a dumb kid from West Virginia too. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I could be you know, any of these same kids out here, just get out there and work hard and bust your rear end and listen to your parents, do well in school and, and let those chips fall where they may. You could be whatever, whatever you want to strive to be. So uh, that's really the message. I like to, to, to throw out there. You know, I'm, I'm not any different than a kid from, from Woodrow or Independence or Shady Springs or Greenbrier West and especially Greenbrier East where I'm from. I grew up just like everybody else and I was very blessed to do what I do. And I just tell kids work hard and, and really fight for it. Um, do you have any, are there any instances you take from your high school sure. career that you would call these? This was one of my all time uh, Best moments, and your guy. Yeah, you just told me you had two hits off Randy Johnson. It's pretty impressive <laughs> for anybody, but a pitcher. You right. Know, but are there instances there? So I, I know in the last twenty years, the Green Rider East Woodrow game has has gotten a little even, more even. But back when I played, it was not even at all. Woodrow wiped the floor with us, and um, I still have on VHS uh, tape in nineteen ninety nine when we beat Woodrow. Um, at home, and I, I hit the go-ahead two game-winning free throws to, to to seal the deal. And I remember pointing to the stands to my brother Marcus, um, uh, who himself played at Virginia Tech, very successful athlete. Um, but these two were for him, and I knocked them down. And I'd often looked at that event as, as something for me to sit there and go, like, nothing's impossible, Seth. Like, you know, you you play a team sport, and, and everybody has to do their part. But when we beat Woodrow, in my mind, that really unlocked a lot of possibilities as far as like, you know, the, the, when I'm facing the Yankees, you know, it's just like the Yankees could be Woodrow or Boston is like the Boston could be Woodrow until you beat them. You know, it, it's you don't accept yourself as part of that. And, and that was kind of the mindset is I often look to that game as something that would give me confidence going forward. And it's crazy. You sit there and think the, the actions of an 18 year old would would help me get out Manny Ramirez the couple times I did. I mean, he got me more than I got him, but it, it does. And, and I, I tell kids all the time, it's, it's moments. Your, your life is, is set in moments. Enjoy that moment and then learn from it and hold on to it. And if you need to revert back to it so you can do what you need to do, that's your moment. Don't, don't, don't waste the time now because it's going to be valuable, valuable to you in your walk in life. Do you, are there any regrets from your career? 
in the measures, I mean, um, I know you tried relieving at one mm -hmm. point with Tampa Bay, I think. Right. Um, and had some pretty good success yeah. with Milwaukee um, yeah. after you went over there. Uh, I, you know, when you talk about starting and relieving, that, that was never really my decision. I, I think as far as, like, regrets, what I, I, I wish, as much time as I did spend on it, I, I wish we... I just wish for more time. I think that's really what it is. And, and probably taking care of my body a little bit better. Um, you know, I'm a rub dirt on it kind of guy. Uh, I played through injuries pretty much my whole career. And that's something that's not really well documented unless you looked at my uh, injury report. It's pretty well documented there. Um, but I battled through a lot. And, um, you know, my numbers weren't great. And I, But, I mean, when you play 16 years professionally and seven years in the big leagues, I mean, you've accomplished something, you know. Um, my numbers, whether whether they're good or bad, um, I know that I battled through a lot of injuries, and maybe I think if I would have healed up a little bit better, I, I, I might have been able to, to do some more damage. But if I had to look at anything, I would probably say take care of my body just a little bit better, and maybe heal up from a few injuries. What was your what would be your career highlight? That's easy, you know, and, and it's not two hits off Randy Johnson, but uh, that's up there. Um, game, we're at the end of the season. I think it's game 160. Um, we're playing the Chicago Cubs. Uh, Jeff Supon is the starter. Soup goes five innings of, you know, whatever ball. Uh, and I think the score is like four to four. I come in, I throw four innings. I throw 63 pitches, 57, 58 of them are fastballs. I'm 97 to 102 all day long. And I strike out four or five. I finish the game, no runs. We end up winning that game and tying the Mets for the wild card. The next day we take the lead to the wild card and we go to the playoffs for the first time. Milwaukee does the first time in 28 years. That's called the Seth McClung game. And it gives me a little bit of status back, back in Milwaukee. And uh, it, I, I'm just, it, for me, that I get the tingles thinking about it right now. I was on another planet and uh, that's my career highlight. Oh, yeah. You get your status, you say. Is this like free drinks and free meals? Yeah, well, Milwaukee, you know, they do hand out drinks in Milwaukee. But, um, you know, I still go to Milwaukee time to time, and people still big red me and, and, and yell for me and cheer for me. Um, it's really nice. Uh, it's uh, – I, I really – it's a different as a young as a young boy growing up in West Virginia. You know, you dream of these things, and our, my upbringing is is one to 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 respect this. So when I still have that, I'm very respectful of it, and I, I I'm very grateful for you that. You know, they still yell at you, probably in back. So hey, so it might not be. so so a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago during the COVID, we ended up coming down here and playing in Charleston. Well, they ended up charging admission for the game, and they, there was like 1,500 people to watch us play a Legion game. It was crazy. Yeah, really and I got heckled. And I looked back and I was like, bring it. That's the first time I've been heckled in like 10 years. <laughs> is, there any, is there any one saying or um, words of wisdom you always pass along to a player that says, uh, says I like to do the same things you did? What, what can you tell me? What can you, wisdom can you impart on me to make me take the path you did and, and make it there to the show? You can't go too slow, but you can go too fast. And that's the hardest thing is, is you can't go too slow. You, you can figure something out and, and then continue to work on it. But if you go too fast, you can never go back. And it's that patience that's really hard. And we're talking about uh, uh, somebody in the professional field or somebody who in the athletic field. If, if you advance too fast, you could be in trouble. So you can never go too slow, but you can you can go too fast. All right, Seth. I always enjoy talking to you. It's been great. Appreciate Thank you, you. Thank you.